And I think that people, you know, they, your friends zero in on you and trying to help you, and they don't realize how difficult it is for a spouse. Mm -hmm. And it is hard. Uh, you know, my husband has kept a good sense of humor, and he's fixed every TV dinner that is out on the market on the weekends that I had chemo. But it's so helpful to have somebody who, who encourages you. And when I lost my hair on a weekend, he said, okay, we're gonna want you to go put on a couple different wigs and put on some different hair. And I'm gonna, we're gonna do a photo shoot mm -hmm. because I want you to see that you look like yourself no matter what hair you right. have on. And you know, that was so helpful to me. Mm -hmm. And I appreciated that. I I, Go ahead. I was saying having a sense of humor about it, too, yeah. is, is really, really important. Did either one of you all keep a journal? I know that a lot of women who are going through this process do yeah, keep a journal. Yeah, I didn't throw out the whole thing. I probably I wrote little bits here and there, but I didn't keep a journal through the whole process. It would have been a good thing to do, yeah. I guess. I started after I finished my radiation. Mm -hmm. I started journaling. and uh, That helped me. It does. It does. I couldn't do much during the treatments. I, I was focused on that and tired. Mm -hmm. And I had to do what I needed to do at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I had to live in the moment, not mm -hmm. worry about 10 steps ahead, how things were going right. to go. Just try to focus on the here and now. Mm -hmm. The closest I came to doing a journal was I got so after every chemo treatment. I would come home and sit down at the computer, e even though the treatments made me really loopy and I wasn't always responsible for what I said to people. <laughs> but I would sit down and, and send out an email to about 36 people, you know, some relatives who were out of town and some very close friends, just to let them know where I was. Mm -hmm. And looking back at, at those emails, I started out very serious and then I, I got my sense of humor back and, and was able to include that into the emails that I was sending. I think that you know, as hard as it is to believe that there's anything positive about this experience, there are negatives and positives. And I'm sure you all have had the same experience that this is positive things come out of this. What did you find, Marcia? Uh, well, I found uh, some connection with other women that had, had uh, gone through the same thing or uh, I found out what wonderful, how supportive my husband was and, and, and uh, what a sense of humor he had about things. I found out that I actually didn't look so bad with short hair when, when it started coming back. <laughs> At least at 33 I didn't. I don't know what I'd look like now. But <laughs> um, I ended up having a uh, mastectomy and, and later on I had a, a preventive mastectomy on the other side. So I also have found that I can live, function just fine without my breasts, if it comes to that, women can also get reconstructed if they decide to do that. Right. But, you know, I mean, I think life is a lot more important than, than other parts of your anatomy that you may end up missing. But, uh, so that was a good thing. But the most important thing, I think, is, is, um, is to realize that life does go on and there's a lot of uh, positive, wonderful things that can still happen. I was telling you, Linda, yeah. that, um, that I had always thought I would try to maybe volunteer, help other women that were going through this. And, and in recent years, I've realize that I'm, I feel a little bit disconnected with what, uh, with maybe with what women are feeling right now, some of their f emotions or fears that they're going through. It's a little fuzzy for me to remember just how I felt when I went through all of that. And of course, I'm out of touch with some of the treatments that are, that are available now. And I was saying that I don't know if, you know, if, I'm, uh, if I can help as much now. And then you were saying that you thought that was a good sign because it, it shows that, that it really does fade. It doesn't remain a, a, a defining part of, of who you are for the, for the rest of your life, and at the time it, it felt like I'm a breast cancer, you know, victim or breast cancer right. survivor, and that's all you can think about for several years. And then eventually you realize, well, that's just one part of who I am. I've done all these other things too, and that's just one part of my past. So, I think that's a. An and I think thing. that's a wonderful way to look at it, and and it's so inspirational to those of us who are are new with this process, and people who are just coming into it to know that you do go on with your life, and and you can be positive, and that it does fade. You know, people have told, I've never had any children of my own, but people have said, you know, the pain of childbirth does, you do forget about it after mm -hmm. you hold that baby and that kind of thing. It's so the same I'm kind of thing, right. thinking mm -hmm. that it's the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. How about you, Kathy? Yeah, <laughs> it is the same, yes. Yep. Uh, I uh, had to, I learned how strong I really am. That was one of the positive things I learned. Um, and helped me to focus. And 
to become a survivor, not a victim. Right. That was that was important to me, is to not have people come up to me and, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I wanted them to, to see me as strong and, and still the same me, but even new and improved, better. Mm -hmm. I think that's one thing that I, I feel with all three of us, that in, in our own way we've been inspirational to other people. Uh, just by having a positive attitude and feeling like we want to tell other people you know that this is not a process that that necessarily is a death death sentence mm -hmm. this, this is something that you go through it's part of life the technology is out there now to save our lives and you know that's such a a, a positive thing I think one thing I have noticed though in, in my reaching out to a, f a few women I uh, haven't had the opportunity to do a lot but um, is every woman handles it differently. Exactly. Too. Some women want want to talk a lot about it and reach out, and, and other women want to be a little more private about it. And you just have to kind of respect how each woman works through it on their own. Right. So, and what you one of you all said about it, I think it was you, Kathy, that you never knew how strong you could be, and that's one of the things that has, you know, I had no idea I had as much strength as I have, <laughs> and and getting through this has has shown me that yes, I can, you know, I can do this. I can can fight this and and in in my mind where I'm standing right now I'm a winner and I plan to continue to be a winner and you know I, I have a lot of things that I like to do in my life my life and I'm, I know that both of you do too that it's important to have that positive attitude and know that you're going to stay around here as long as you possibly can to make a difference mm -hmm. I, I do know that one thing I in in lessons I've learned the first lesson I learned was that chemo sucks. <laughs> <laughs>